So here's a question. Um, I'm a huge mosquito magnet. I know how you feel. I'm also one of those magnets, so solidarity to you. Um, and many antibite sprays don't seem to prevent me from getting bitten in areas with high mosquito activity. What's the recommended level of strength of DEET in order to be, for it to be effective? Also, how often should you reapply it? Thank you very much for that question. As I said, I'm a huge mosquito magnet. So, the, I'll give you the scientific answer and the non-scientific answer afterwards. Um, so, scientific answer is, it, it's down to the individual. So, mosquitoes are attracted by a number of things to, to people, including heat um, and chemical receptors that they have on their antennae. And the chemicals that they're attracted by are the, the chemicals in our sweat. And we all, as individuals, produce different concentrations of these chemicals in our sweat. So if you're a mosquito magnet, the good news is that you're a mosquito magnet to certain types of mosquitoes, but you'll be less of a magnet to other types of mosquitoes. So unfortunately, be, me being in the job that I'm in, I've tested myself by uh, having a cage with mosquitoes, seeing which ones bite me. And it turns out that, luckily or unluckily for me, the Onopheles mosquito, which is the vector for malaria, really likes biting me, which is good for me, right? Luckily for me, the Aedes mosquito, which is a, is a vector for things like dengue, um, doesn't like biting me so much. So there's, there's the pro, is that there'll be some mosquitoes that really like biting you and others that really aren't attracted to you. And that's because those species are looking for different concentrations of the chemical that will be in your sweat. So if you or I, two mosquito magnets, were in the same room, depending on what mosquito I put in that room, depends on which one of us it would go for. So obviously, the non-scientific answer is, if you're in the same bedroom with a family member who's really attracted by mosquitoes, that'd be a really good repellent for you, although might, the family member might be a bit annoyed that they're just getting bitten instead of you. In terms of repellents, this also is very individual. So some people find that when they use, like, like the, the question here, some, some use some sprays and it does absolutely nothing but a friend or family member uses it and it seems to get rid of uh, all the mosquitoes or flies or whatever. DEET is the one with the most evidence, as I mentioned, so I definitely start with DEET. Um, there's lots of different strengths of DEET being advertised. In the literature, 50%, so 5-0% is the one that um, has the most evidence. And it's a bit counterintuitive in the fact that the percentage to me always sounds like um, that's the strength of it, that's how strong, that's how high the concentration is. But actually for lots of these repellents, the percentage corresponds with how long it lasts for rather than how strong it is. Now, lots of studies done by the American military looking at DEET showed that actually any concentrations above 50% last no longer than 50%, but they were associated with a high number of side effects like skin reactions. So if you see 50%, that's the one to go for. Um, Obviously, if it gives you a reaction or it really isn't working against the mosquitoes you're with, then try one of the other ones. So picaridin would be next, IR35 would be third, and then the um, lemon eucalyptus would be fourth, for me personally. But that might work differently for you, all right? Be slightly careful about, the, as I said, the super-duper 80-90% DEET stuff that's being sold. It has no benefit over the 50% stuff. So 50% start with. Um, how often should you reapply it? Um, I'm sure you guys are all aware the sunscreen industry have done lots of work on this. How often do you reapply your sunscreen? Answer, pretty much never. None of us ever reapply our sunscreen. That's why we all get sunburned when we go into hot countries with the sun shining. So we are actually really bad, myself included, in reapplying any sort of protective creams. And so my answer to that would be, try and reapply it in the first place, because most people never reapply it. Um, obviously, you'll follow the manufacturer's instructions if you can. Some, some uh, bottles will say after every couple of hours. I would advise you, depends what you're doing. So obviously, if you're just lying flat on a hot beach somewhere, the sun's shining, you're not doing very much, you're not sweating very much, you're not going swimming, then you may not need to reapply it for a couple of hours. If you're trekking through a jungle, hot, steamy jungle forest, or you're swimming in a lovely river or in the sea, obviously that's going to wash off some of this um, uh, repellent. And so obviously you're going to need to reapply it at that point. All right. So it also depends on what you're doing. But what I'd say is just try and reapply because most of us fail at that.